GC Unboxing is back and we're on the crest of a wave. Little joke there for you. Bit subtle, perhaps. But anyway, we have got a mega unboxing for you this week. I can't imagine there is a single person out there that would not want these. And if there is, then they might want to seek help. As always with GC Unboxing, we are giving you the opportunity to win as well. I will tell you how you can enter a little bit later on. But for now, brace yourself for these. Oh, oh, oh. Zips, a brand new 404 Firecrest wheels. The latest incarnation of the venerable 404. Apparently Zips' best-selling wheel. And it's not hard to see why, really. It's kind of like the Goldilocks. It's light enough to be able to climb with the best, and yet it's still mega aero to boot. And these ones have just got even better as well because technology from the flagship NSW range has migrated over onto Firecrest. <laughs> There's another little joke there. I, I said migrate because a Firecrest is a bird, apparently. Anyway, the 404 can be considered a mid-depth wheel. It's 58 millimeters high in profile. And I think it's important to remember that when the Firecrest shape was launched back in 2010, it was something of a game changer from a performance perspective. It ushered in a new era of stability in crosswinds, as well as having impressive straight line speed. But actually at the time, its look was so striking, there were a few people that struggled to get on board with it because here was an aerodynamic wheel that didn't look like what aerodynamic should do, because it was really blunt at this edge here. But there was a very good reason for that, and it was because Zip had actually refocused their thinking, they said, from the leading edge of the wheel, so the one that strikes the wind first, to the trailing edge of the wheel. And so effectively what they did was try and make it aerodynamic both times the rim strikes the wind. These new ones have now been optimized for 25 millimeter wide tires. And so in order to do that, the overall width of the rim has been beefed up slightly. So it's now 26.4 millimeters wide and also 17 millimeters wide internally. And so what that means is the all important transition from tire to wheel and then also wheel to tire is much, much smoother. And that is incredibly important when it comes to the overall aerodynamic performance of the whole wheel set. Now, what then about those big changes that have come from the NSW line? They are pretty striking, I'm not gonna lie. Firstly, I need my front wheel to demonstrate. Those traditional familiar zip dimples have now evolved into the ABLC sawtooth pattern, which is designed similarly to improve the stability of the wheel in crosswinds. And it works in a really clever way. So traditionally, when wind hits a wheel from the side, pressure begins to build up until your wheel twitches, the pressure is released, and then the whole thing starts over again. And that is kind of why Traditionally, you'd find that a normal deep section wheel would be a little bit uncomfortable to ride in windy conditions. But with these, the dimples actually start aerodynamic shearing at higher frequencies. So it makes lots of little pressure releases as opposed to one big one. You can think of it a little bit like aero farts. Although Zip would probably rather that you thought about it in terms of uh, small sheet vortices that operate at low magnitudes but higher frequencies, thus decreasing that laminar bubble effect that builds up on the aerodynamic shielded side of the rim profile. Yes, so you could basically run these wheels in more conditions more of the time. The next bit of tech to migrate over from NSW is the showstopper brake track. So that dramatically improves braking performance, particularly in the wet. And when you look at the rim closely, you'll see that there's loads of little grooves embedded onto the brake track. I counted, there's actually 317, and it's the same on each side of the wheel, funnily enough, and the same front and back. And what they do effectively, as well as increasing the surface area and the roughness of the brake track, they also act as siping to channel water away from your brake surface. You do, of course, as with all carbon wheels, need to use the right pads. And there they are, your zip brake pads. Uh, but also with this, interestingly, you need to remember to put your front wheel in the right direction. And there's an arrow on there somewhere to tell you exactly where, oh yeah, there you go. Ta-da! Also worth noting that it makes an incredibly cool noise when you apply the brakes. Uh, right, now one thing that isn't talked about so much anymore with carbon clinchers, but should be because it's incredibly important, is the resistance to heat buildup under braking. Because historically, it's been incredibly tough to engineer carbon clinchers to actually withstand that kind of braking power. Except 
that Zip have an incredible track record when it comes to that. And in fact, they say they've never had a carbon clincher rim fail due to heat buildup. And bear in mind, they started selling carbon clincher wheels back in 2010. And of the many reasons that go into that heat resistance, I think possibly the coolest one for me is the fact that they work with their supplier of resin to actually develop their own heat resistant resin, which is kind of cool. Easy to gloss over, but super important. And when you look actually full stop into the development of carbon wheels at Zip, it's an absolutely fascinating story, particularly the bit about where they got the first victory at Paru Bay for a carbon wheel. Apparently, the development behind that wheel actually was what ushered in the firecrest shape in the first place. That kind of strength and resilience comes from numerous different things like the shape and the layup and the materials used, but also not insignificant part comes down to the quality control. So Zip carbon rims are made in-house at their Indianapolis headquarters. And making stuff out of carbon is a really labor intensive process. And there are numerous quality controls in there that means that each wheel that rolls off the production line meets the same exacting requirements. Yeah, all right, I'll get off my soapbox for now, but having been banging on about safety, I'm actually pleased to be able to tell you that yeah. The new 404 is 75 grams lighter than its predecessor. It's now just 1,615 grams for the pair. And bearing in mind, they're 58 mil deep and they're carbon clinchers. Now, I've been talking about the rims for quite some time, but what about the hubs? These are the tried and tested 77 up front and the 177 at the back, laced via 18 spokes radially in the front wheel and 24 in the back. And you'll probably want to hear the free hub. Yeah, of course you do. That's a spinner, isn't it? I'll stop it there. Interestingly, you can very easily and quickly swap out the free hub body uh, for a SRAM XD driver if you want. So those are the ones where you can get a super small 10 tooth sprocket and then a massive 42 tooth cassette on there as well. Yeah, I'm talking about one by drivetrains. It's the future. All right, it's a future, but still, I think it's quite an exciting one. Uh, right, the only other point I would like to draw your attention to, really, is the logos, because I have a sneaking suspicion that the Zip logo could well be the fastest logo in all of cycling. I mean, it looks kind of fast even when it's standing still, but it looks like a rocket ship even when you're going really slowly. Brilliant. Who wouldn't want that? Uh, the other bits that come in the box, I've already mentioned the brake pads, but then there is, of course, a quick release skewer, front and back, there we go. And valve extenders, because now you've gone for 58 mil deep wheels, you need to think about having the right length valve on there. There we go, new Zip 404 Firecrest. Or that you want to know how to enter? Of course you do. It's very simple. In the description beneath this video, there is a link. That link will take you straight through to the competition page where you can enter your details and then keep your fingers firmly crossed. We will announce the winners in a forthcoming GCN tech show and you won't have to wait all that long, so make sure you get in quick. Right, if you wanna watch another video now, then I think a really interesting one actually, another Zip video. This was from when they first launched the 808 NSW. We did a cheeky little test about the difference in speed you get between a standard box section aluminium wheel and a Super Aero 808. Not a fair test, perhaps, but a very interesting one. <laughs> I feel like a firecrest. For these. Zip's brand new 404. <laughs> They're skiddy, all right?